from the Digital Media Center on the campus of Southern Oregon University in Ashland, Oregon. This is Ramping Up Your English, an educational program for intermediate level English language learners. Here's your host for Ramping Up Your English, John Letts. Welcome to Ramping Up Your English, winner of the 2017 Southern Oregon Television Award for Program of the Year and the Best Education Show. Ramping Up Your English is an educational support program for intermediate English learners. It's a program for people from all language backgrounds. Ramping Up Your English is also for people of all ages. Now, if you've already passed the beginning stages of learning English, you want to reach higher levels of proficiency this program is designed to meet your needs. We take a content-based approach to helping you reach higher levels of English proficiency. Our current thematic unit is Animals. This is segment one of episode 74. One of our previous episodes in this unit focused on the animals of Africa. In this episode, we return to that great continent by interviewing someone who's actually traveled there. Please welcome to Ramping Up Your English, my special guest, Regina Ayers. Regina, welcome to Ramping Up Your English. Thank you very much for having me on the program, John. You're certainly welcome. And understanding an interview can be a challenging task in any language. The viewer has no way of predicting what the interview subject may say, and having two voices can prevent, present, I should say, a further challenge. Now, in today's episode, We'll weave in our interview with video clips, and then I'll have you write five things you learn from both the video and the interview. And the subject of, is the travel to Africa, plus seeing and hearing some wildlife there. So listen closely, and we'll see how strong your English comprehension skills are growing to be. But first, let's learn a few things about my guest. Regina is a producer here at RVTV, Regina, let's learn a little bit about the programs that you produce here. Well, I have two programs, um, um, Getaway Girl, and that is my travel program, and I do that by myself. But I also, uh, the original program that we started on, uh, I co-host with Carol Voison, and that is called uh, Girl Talk. And I realize that we're up to, you're episode 74, right? right. Yeah. We're episode uh, 34. So uh, we started a little bit later than you do. But yes, that's a talk show about women's issues, women that are making a difference in our community. And uh, we're going to be um, filming one next weekend. Great. Well, one thing that I love about your, your I love both of your shows, but your travel show, I've become mm -hmm. quite a fan. Because you allow viewers to go to all these places where most people like me, we're never going to get to those places. You know, and they're intriguing kinds of trips. Uh, things now, uh, your your latest one was about Africa, and in a moment we're going to see some of that first part, right? Uh, which uh, focuses on chimpanzees. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that was a wonderful trip I took with my daughter in 2015. Yeah, we were there over the Christmas holidays, and um, yeah, I, I divided that between the chimpanzees and the gorillas, and that was why we went to see those animals and they were fascinating and yeah. you know you had so many good things about it that you had to make it a two-part I did show I did so let's look at a mashup I made of the getaway episode getaway girl episode part one we'll learn about chimpanzees mm -hmm. and a whole bunch of other megafauna of Africa so let's watch great Another day trip was a short boat ride to a chimpanzee sanctuary on Nagamba Island, established 20 years ago as part of the Jane Goodall Institute. New animals are quarantined for 90 days prior to coming to the island. The 100-acre island sanctuary is home to close to 50 orphan chimpanzees. We were told if there was an emergency and the chimpanzees escaped, uh, we should walk into the lake. Chimpanzees don't like water. This is good to know. 
we were taken to a tall platform where the chimpanzees gathered for meals. At the appointed hour, they came in from the forest where they spent their days and excitedly demanded their food. Fruits and vegetables which are delivered to the island every five days. You can observe them using sticks to reach for food, which is a skill that was not known about chimpanzees until Jane Goodall observed this behavior in the wild. Chimps were all ages. Chimps live to be 30 or 40 years old if they survive to adulthood, which is considered 12 years old. Females live longer than males, as with humans. One chimp in captivity was known to live to the age of 72. That's hard to believe. They all had names and written biographies that we could read if we could match up the photos with the actual face and body of the animal. I bought this apron with Tumbo's face and name on it. And I, I don't think I actually ever found Tumbo. This was my favorite purchase a wooden carving of a chimpanzees. It hangs on the wall of my living room. Africa, that was her name, is framed and hanging in my bedroom wall. A hundred years ago, there were million, a million chimpanzees in Africa. Now, as, as an endangered species, there are about 200,000 in the wild. The chimps on the island must learn to live in uh, a community and they roam free during the day but sleep indoors at night. Caregivers ensure that the animals are healthy and those who have special conditions receive special diets. Bonds are developed much as with a child and a parent. Let's listen to the chimpanzees. <laughs> As you can hear, chimpanzees are very vocal and loud, unlike the gorillas, loud and boisterous like human beings. We were told that if charged, we should cling to the nearest tree and hug it. These are habituated animals, but they see humans almost daily. But that doesn't mean that they won't charge humans, even though we, humans and chimps, are the closest genetic match of all the primates, 98%. The next morning, we crossed the equator on our way to the Queen Elizabeth National Park. Along the way, we see elephants, lots of elephants. A cob, which is a, well, let's look at some more elephants. We took some really, or I didn't take them, but, but uh, Others on the trip took some beautiful pictures of elephants. They're such mag majestic animals, and they come in all shapes and sizes. This is a cob, an antelope-like animal with burnt red coloring. And baboons, I have lots of pictures of baboons, which are monkeys, lots of begging, aggressive baboons. Baboons are vicious and, uh, in my opinion, ugly. I'm sure there's people out there that love baboons, but they're very prolific. We saw more baboons than any other animal. They follow the trucks and beg for food. The next morning, we take a safari, seeing all the animals you would expect to see on an African safari. These are the only sightings we had of lions, and only because our drivers saw them off in the distance. Here's another cob. They have very interesting horns and again that burnt red coloring. Warthogs. They are ugly, but I kind of like them. They're like the feral hogs that we have and that are so prolific here in the United States. The Cabal National Population of Elephants travels between Cabal and Queen Elizabeth National Park. As I mentioned before, it is 110 miles long allowing the elephants and other animals to migrate back and forth. There's several pictures here of hippos. Hippos kill more humans than any other wild animal. 
Um, I really love this picture. It shows hippos with birds hitching a ride, water buffalo, baboons, elephants. Actually, there are five species all coexisting at the water's edge. And as you can see, these huge creatures, the elephants, are gracefully swimming along uh, and then congregating on the uh, edge of the canal. I have to say, you know, besides the gorillas and the chimpanzees, the elephants were just magnificent. And as you can tell, I took a lot of pictures. There are colorful birds, all kinds of birds with crests, large birds like the open bill stork, and uh, this orange uh, colored bird is very, very festive. And nests, these were birds were nesting. And this is a crane.